Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have two very easy keto flatbread recipes for you. The first one is for keto non bread, and the second one is for keto pita bread. They both are delicious and they both are very, very easy. And if you want printable versions of these, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find printable versions of these and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat an 8 inch skillet over medium heat until the skillet is warm. In a large mixer bowl, combine 63 grams or a half cup of coconut flour, 1 fourth teaspoon of salt, 5 grams or 1 tablespoon of baking powder, and a fourth teaspoon of xanthan gum. Sift or whisk these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add two large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in more smooth. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients have been lightly moistened. Add five milliliters or a half tablespoon of the oil of your choice. I'm using olive oil. You can use whatever oil you want. Add two ounces or one fourth cup of the milk of your choice. Make sure your milk is at room temperature Add 53 grams or three and a half tablespoons of plain yogurt or sour cream and one to two tablespoons of warm water. Make sure it is warm so it helps keep your dough soft. Stir everything all together until it's fully combined. Form the dough into a ball and massage it for at least one minute. This will help get rid of any extra moisture. After you've massaged it for a minute, place it back into the mixing bowl and let it sit for about two, three minutes. This again is just going to help the ingredients bind together well so that your naan stays together in one piece once you roll it all out. Divide the naan into five equal portions. Place one portion at a time onto a clean work surface and roll the portion out to a circle that's about six inches in diameter, give or take. I'm rolling mine out to six inches in diameter and about a fourth inch thick. Once all your naan has been rolled out and your skillet is warm, lightly spray your skillet with some cooking spray or lightly grease it with some butter. Place the dough circles one at a time into your heated skillet. Cover and cook over medium heat for about one minute or until the underside of the naan is brown and spotty and releases easily from the skillet. Then turn the naan over and cover and cook for another 30 to 45 seconds or until the naan is lightly golden on both sides. Once it's cooked, place it on a plate or a wire rack while you cook the remaining dough. When it's all cooked and you're ready to serve it, you can eat it by itself for a snack or eat it as a side dish with whatever meal you've prepared. For the pita pocket, line a large baking sheet with parchment paper, then place the baking sheet in your oven and while the baking sheet is in your oven, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Make sure you leave the baking sheet in there. We want the baking sheet to be hot when we place our pita on it. In a large mixer bowl, combine 126 grams or one cup of coconut flour, two grams or two teaspoons of baking powder, and three fourths teaspoon of xanthan gum. Sift or whisk these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add about a half cup of melted butter or the oil of your choice or a combination of butter or oil. I like to use olive oil and or butter. Stir this all together until they're fully combined and all the dry ingredients have been moistened. Add six ounces or three fourths cup of warm water. Make sure it is warm water so this keeps your dough nice and soft. Stir the water into the ingredients for at least a good 30 seconds. When you put the water in at first, it's going to seem like it's going to be really soupy and wet. 
But as you stir the dough for at least 30 to 45 seconds, that water is going to be absorbed by the xanthan gum. This is what will help your dough to bind together. This recipe does not contain eggs. So the xanthan gum is your binding agent. If you do not have xanthan gum, you can use a couple tablespoons of finely ground flaxseed meal. Your texture will be a little bit different, but it will still be tasty. If you do use the flaxseed meal, once the dough is all combined, you'll need to allow it to sit for a little bit in order for it to absorb any excess liquid. If you're like me and you're just using the xanthan gum, you don't have to worry about it. Just keep stirring it for a good 30 to 45 seconds or until all the water has been combined into the other ingredients. Once everything is fully combined, form the dough into a ball and massage it for at least one minute so that any extra moisture can get absorbed and that the xanthan gum can start doing its magic and binding the ingredients together. After massaging it for a minute, divide the dough into about 10 portions. Line a clean work surface and take one portion at a time and place it onto your clean work surface. Roll each portion out to a circle that's roughly about 6 to 8 inches in diameter and about 1 8 inch thick. Once your dough portions have all been rolled out to the 6 to 8 inch circles and about an 8 inch thick, take one dough circle and place it on top of another dough circle. Lightly moisten the tips of your fingers and seal just the edges of your circles together. This is going to help form a pocket once your pitas have been baked. Once you're done stacking and sealing your circles, you should have about five pitas. Remove your baking sheet from the oven and place your pitas onto the baking sheet. And place the baking sheet in your preheated oven. Bake at 400 degrees for about seven to 10 minutes or until lightly golden around the edges. Once it's done baking, remove it from the oven. Allow it to cool on your pan for at least five minutes before transferring it. After five minutes, transfer the pitas to a wire rack and allow them to cool completely before you cut them. Once they're done cooling, cut each one of the pita circles in half, then use a sharp knife and cut each half down the center to form a pocket. Be very careful when you do this. You don't want to create holes in the sides of your pocket, so you need a nice sharp knife for this. Make sure when you are cutting through this that you keep the bottom and the edges of the half circles intact so that it is a sealed pocket all the way around so that whatever you stuff it with doesn't fall out. Once the pitas are cut into the pockets, you can put your desired filling into each one of the pockets. Serve them immediately, or if you do have any leftovers, you can store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to three days. Eat and enjoy. And that's the recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make, and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.